episode of Fun Rose Food. David here, Andrew, we're with Guac Thai himself, Nelly Nel Chan. <laughs> Don't be calling the cops on me, all right? As you guys may know, a lot of different styles of Asian food are not only trendy right now, but they are being modernized. However, a style of food that has yet to be modernized in America and is also very dear to our hearts here is the Cantonese roast meats. As far as I know, in America, Rice Box in downtown LA is the first elevated Cantonese barbecue shop. And guess what, guys? As some Cantonese guys, we're about to try it. Elevated, elevated Cantonese, Cantonese barbecue. barbecue. Let's, Let's go. go. Yo, what's going on? I am here with the owners of Rice Box, Leo and Lydia. Hola. Hi. <laughs> what Rice Box, the family recipes, is from my grandpa's uh, Cantonese barbecue restaurant in wow. Central. How true to the recipes from your grandparents? It's yeah. really true. We modified a few things, but it is really true and honor to the family recipe. But uh, we just tweaked it a little bit just to bring it more up to date. We're excited and thank you guys for opening it. First off, to kick off any proper Cantonese meal, you must have the VLT. Every time I drink this, I am zapped back to HK, man. I'm going with the cheesy chashu bao first. Let's do the yeah, cheesy, cheesy one. Cheesy. Ooh! I've never good. seen a cheesy chashu bao. All right, everybody doing it that way, I just gotta take a bite. A cheesy chashu bao, that just sounds fun. That sounds crazy. Yeah. And I feel like, especially you like uh, mac and cheese on pizza, so I'm like. Explosion. <laughs> the combination <laughs> of between cheese and the chashu bao. Growing up, I ate it so much, you know, my mom and dad were just like, yo, you hungry, just give you a tashi. Real quick snack uh, before I get into business, you know? <laughs> what was the concept behind the cheesy chashi bao? The cheese itself blended very well with the sweetness and the saltiness of the chashi. So it's like, you know, a little mix of what we're all about. Something old, something new, something fusion. It's almost like, is rice box encapsulated the I ethos behind the ice box? I would say it works surprisingly well together. I am just glad to see people pushing Cantonese things forward, oh. man. Push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. It's almost like Kit Kats. Yep. When you added new more flavors to Kit Kats, they didn't get rid of the original one. Right. They just added the green tea matcha one. Yeah. OG, Listen, bro. don't let anyone tell you to not eat the OG chai hey, Wow. We like to say whole fluffy. Oh. Oh, here's what's cool about this chashu bao right off the bat. It's not super red inside, which means that it doesn't have the food color in it. You know the outside mm. is almost more like a lao sa bao? Yeah. It's more like a, a steamed mantau, how it's kind of spongy, bouncy. Got a good meat to sauce ratio. Yeah. The one other chashu bao that I had the feeling that I would say tastes similar is Meili Ma. Mei Wa. That is the best chashu bao in Chinatown. Now something else that they're doing differently here is the vegan chashu bao. Have you guys ever Nell's heard? Favorite. <laughs> Nell's favorite. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a vegan chashu bao? How what? can it be vegan if it is also chashu? <laughs> what you mean? Unless only maybe you feed the pig only vegetables when it is growing up. No, I love the, how they have the charcoal stripe. Yeah. It looks uh, something that you'd only think you'd only see at a Japanese spot. No, this looks like a cool uh, brush stroke. You know, something like you might want to get a tattoo of. Mmm, that smells good, man. This is that mushroom and vermicelli. Vegan, vegan chashu bao. Never had that before. I'm rocking mm. with that. Oh, that is really wow. sweet. Got that mushroom flavor. I would say it does kind of taste like chashu. It does in a way. Yeah. Lydia and Leo know they're in LA. They got to serve a vegan option. Do you have any vegan options? <laughs> Nelson, you've been analyzing and scanning the insides of that bao for like 30 seconds. I've so never what have you found, Detective Chan? There are some, uh, some onions in there. <laughs> Hey, like, you do look like a detective, good. man. Look at this coat. Sure. No, no, no. Actually, looks like the gangster, but he's also a cop. Oh yeah, yeah. Tong Zi Gei Gong. I'm a good person, or a bad person. Chashu bao's are almost more like viewed as like a snack, you know, like yeah. a hot dog, like a hot like dog. corn dog or something. <laughs> do we notice that they have a mahjong table right here? But like, yeah. when we say mahjong table, not a mahjong sport table. Like, it's a table made out of mahjong. That a poor <laughs> Chinese American can be worth it. I don't know what you said. <laughs> Woo! I feel it coming. I got a question, yo. You guys know how when you spell chashu in English, they spell it char siu? Yeah. Like, why? Like, that's not how you say it in Mandarin or Cantonese. Could be based off toy song wise. Oh, that's true. Char siu. Char siu. Char siu. I don't know. It sounds more like Beijing. Beijing. Char siu. Woo! Okay, we got rice boxes, cha shu fan. 
barbecue pork rice. First of all, you know it's new age because they throw in the cracked sunny side egg up, okay? And you got pickled daikon, pickled cukes. So those are a little new. Yeah, and then you got the gailan, which is the Chinese broccoli right here. This is a Duroc pork, right, Andrew? Duroc pork, which is an American breed of pork that is bred for eating, so you know it's gonna be delicious. Hey. Cha chu, tender. And it has this nice little charred finishing where after, you know, it's marinated and cooked, they lock it in by charring it for a little while. I like how it has the right balance between like lean meat and fat meat. Wooden face out, it's just mm. perfect. But they don't have food coloring in here. So this is all the natural color that cha chu is looking at. This is a lot darker and a lot more brown. Immediately I was looking for like that really sweet candy flavor, but I ended up tasting a little bit more of the pork, mm -hmm. which is good though, because you, you get more like the meaty, mm. the meaty essence. The more savory taste. The most underrated, yeah. the Seal guy. Yeah. They gave you that huge heaping serving of the ginger scallion sauce. That's Gurren Chong right there. The scallion gives it that extra the cool thing about this chicken is that there's no bones in it. Bro, he hooked Lit you up. Oh, yeah. He hooked you up. I'll yeah. put Gurren Chong even on the chashu. I'll, I'll put it on anything. Gurren Chong goes on everything. GS. GS for my gun squad. Yeah, really, really healthy, clean. really healthy. You know, healthy. You got the white meat. To do white meat well is very hard because, you know, you're talking about the breast meat. It's very big. It easily dries out. It has, like, less fat in it. But they did a great job. I'm normally not a fan of white meat. I'm more of a dark meat guy. But this white meat done really, really well. Like it's still juicy, you know? Yeah. But like you say, you no know, white meat normally dry. That chicken was dry. This might be the healthiest thing here. So if you guys are on a diet or you guys are trying to cut weight, rice and chicken, maybe mine is the rice. This might be my dump package meal. Chew your roast pork. Not barbecue pork, roast pork. Oh, oh that crunch, I didn't even oh. eat it yet. I just heard it. Wow. This to me is the craziest item. This <laughs> was actually oh. porchetta. So this is like a European thing. It's a roll of pork that they put like herbs and stuff in between each roll. This is a shift in technique. Yeah, yeah, because because usual siuyuk, which is the pork, the crispy pork skin, it's usually flat out long, you know, and then yeah. you're chopping it out of like a long flat block. No, you're just chop, chopping the pig's back yeah. where the pig's just oing, oing, <laughs> just, Oh, oh. <laughs> Actually, you know what uh, happens when you roll things up and you roast them? All the juices stay locked in. Yeah. And they're just like marinating each other in like a crazy like marination. Cycle. Cycle. Oh, there's chimichurri. This, okay. They have chimichurri, chimichurri sauce on this. This is new. Yo, that. That hit me like. Oh. <laughs> My jaw. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> And I liked how the skin didn't immediately break off the meat. Team stayed yep. together. Yep. <laughs> team skin, team meat. Here we have the last two, and these are the saucy ones. Gale Ao Lam, curry beef brisket. One of my favorite dishes. This piece of Nao Lam, Nao which is lam. beef tendon. Man, it is, no, I, it's I, jiggling, like as you shake it a little bit. I can see the tendon just Wow. That's super good. Wow. And you know me, I'm about the curry. Uh -huh. Wow. A little different from traditional curry, mm -hmm. but it just tastes so good. A little Malaysian, obviously the Malaysian style, closer to the Indian style. No, it's spicier. It's spicier yeah. than the original Cantonese curry. Yup. Mm. No, even like the, the coloring, you can tell. You know, a little more coconut. Yeah, a little more coconut. And this is where I feel like the pickled vegetables really come into play mm -hmm. on the spicy curry. You got a little daikon, little cukes, cool everything down. No, don't adjust no, it. Don't it. Don't just it. Just Ho ho me Vegan mapo eggplant. Oh, I've got a lot. I like how the eggplant has, a, it's, it's just soft enough, but it doesn't fully break apart. Yo, that definitely tastes like meat. That's crazy. Also, you could taste a lot of the mushroom in it too. Yeah. yeah. I heard there's a debate in some vegan circles. Should you eat vegan things that are designed to taste like meat? I always thought it was a little bit strange that you would go vegan, but still want everything to taste like meat. I'm really impressed by the way they do vegan things here. You've just turned me vegan for the night. <laughs> Whether it was the vegan chashu bao, and now this vegan mapo eggplant. This might be, it was, done, it was done really well. This is for me, because I don't eat at vegan spots all the time. This is the best vegan canto food I've ever had. Affordable, beautiful, amazing. Yao pang, yao lang, yao tang. Ah! Who am I? What was your absolute favorite thing? For me, obviously, I liked the curry brisket the most. I was most impressed by the pork kettle. So you were impressed by something, but you, your best choice was something. Correct. Because I am able to, in my mind, 
separate my individual tastes from what is more globally impactful. Going off of that, I would say definitely the porchetta crispy pork is definitely the most impressive and one of my favorite, but the OG chashu, you can't go wrong. You know, I had $40 chashu over in New York at a Chinese tuxedo. I think you should be able to pay more money for chashu. I'm just glad to see chashu and sumei have its range, that's all. I'm, I'm gonna have to double down on the chashu rice box, man. You know, like, all, basically Andrew said it all, the staple, you can't go wrong with chashu. Um, the way they do it here at Rice Box is just, you know, to another level. We're just like, they upgrade it with more premium quality. Um, I'm also gonna have to go with cheesy tashu bao, man. It's just like something different. Uh, I like the cheese filling inside of it. You know, it really gives it that more extra savory taste. It's like what Leo said, the cheesy tashu bao really represents the ethos and the motto yeah. and like the philosophy of the sort right, of guys right, Rice Box. Right. With so many other spots popping up in LA, whether it's, you know, a lot of mainland Chinese spots. I love mainland Chinese food, I love Sichuan food. But I'm really, I mean, aren't you glad to see a Cantal spot come through with clean aesthetics, high quality meats? This is in inside the Spring Arcade on Spring Street. And shout out to Rice Box for taking on that challenge of being like, yo, yeah. put that on me. That's on me. <laughs> aren't you guys, thank you so much for joining us on that very special Cantonese episode of Fun Rose Food. We are at Rice Box in downtown Los Angeles at the Spring Arcade. Huge shout out to Leo, Lydia, everybody here at Rice Box. Bon hop. Hey, guys, as Canto guys, did we fulfill our duty today? Cheers to that. All right, you guys, please let us know in the comments section below what are some other things you would like to see an elevated version of. And number two, some spots in LA that we need to try out. Again, you guys, it's always about food and culture together, never just one or the other. And until next time, you guys, thank you so much for watching. We out. Peace. Peace. Okay, Rice Box, a lot of great graphics. You got Stephen Chow. He played like a Cha Xiu guy in a movie called From Beijing With Love. They actually have the movie that Chow Xing Chi is in right now.